Sabbath greetings, good morning to you. Well, this is going to be a day, I feel, I pray, of declaration, of dedication. I'm not entirely certain of the shape or the form that I'll take. <coughs> As the Bible says, few are powerful or highly born. First Corinthians. I stand at the gate of my home. A home that originally I dedicated one part of it to the Lord. And the Lord has responded by ded dedicating the whole part. Or sanctifying the whole part. Not to me because of who he is and what he's done and how he's moving in my life. I've been out of work now for over a year. I've applied for many jobs abroad. And although I have no means or income, he has helped establish me to keep my head above the water. And it's all I can do to establish and dedicate and give myself over to whatever work he has in mind for me to do. And that's going to be the establishment of the church of Carpe Cruxis. Seize the cross. <coughs> Headquarters is in the garage of the church. building dedicated, gates posted, with the Ten Commandments, biblically and spiritually align ourselves with God, with His will, with His truth, to be as obedient as possible, whilst recognising our human frailty, giving, loving, caring and pushing towards a society that is somehow apparent, beautiful and more loving than the one that we currently live in this neighbourhood we pray for a, a fine example of disparate unhelpful uncaring, self-centred 21st century philosophy utopian ideals <laughs> of course utopia being based on human ideals and human endeavour selfishness which says good morning when responded to with a good morning. And it's uh, no coincidence that that sentiment is echoed on the walls of the town where I grew up. The war memorial, largest war memorial outside of a city centre. In Europe, First World War, tell Britain, ye that mark this monument, faithful to her we fell and rest content. Remember the names that live on these walls, died in youth or prime, that future generations might inherit a happier world and a human society more caring and more loving than those men and their brave generation knew. can't change the past, the wars and the difficulties, good morning to you, the sufferance, the sickness, the iniquity and the disease, what I can change is my attitude and my walk in response to that how I choose to overcome it, what I choose to profess, 
is the way, the truth, and the life that is Jesus Christ. Oh, you may say, you hear people saying, oh, so many wars have been caused by religion. Well, that's not true. There have been wars caused by the name of religion. But one study of all the wars that have ever been fought in all the world, in all the history recorded, less than 10% of them are because of religion. The majority of them are about things more common to the human condition, greed, power, need for more land, need for resources, need to show off. Why now? Because it's necessary. Because that's my standpoint, my calling. Why here? Because this is where I am. This is where God has placed me. And it's unto Him, to Him, that I you know, dedicate everything that I am. I love for the things that you show me, for the for the beauty that the heavens declare the goodness and righteousness of my king. The firmament shows his handiwork and sings from every leaf, every dewdrop, every raindrop, every bird, every animal. Today's sermon is going to be an echo of this message. That's what I need to do is proclaim the word of God, and proclaim the truth of God, proclaim the place that God has put me in to, to do the same. You hear of my wranglings and my doubts and my fears and my upsets and my thoughts and my hopes. And to really focus them and to bring them together is to overcome the negative, overcome the doubts and the fears and begin to proclaim and profess who I believe myself to be and the, who I believe myself to be here because I can totally and completely vouch who I believe him to be. He's the God of the Bible, he's the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Israel, not the physical place. spiritual place. He's the great I am. And I am not him. But I stand for him. I want to be like him. I want to know him more. I want to walk with him and talk with him. I want to meet with him. I want to be obedient to him. And I pull faces because that's difficult for me. And in doing that, I want to pour out that love for others. That obedience for others. Open stone sculpture by Hiroiki Ueda. 1971. Well, I was born in 1917. Conceived in the age of Aquarius, a real low point of man's uh, a real high point of man's disobedience. Born at uh, the death of an 
destination. The death of the society, the death of the empire. Great Britain. <laughs> It's not the British Empire. Really, it's the Roman Empire. It would seem to me, if what I understand and what I profess, that the legs of the statue of <coughs> the tree of Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel are long ones. How do I qualify that? Pounds, shillings and pence. The fact that Cadbury's own the copyright or the patent or the ownership of Imperial Purple. A Western society still based on laws that came from that nation, that came from that line, it still operates at its fundamental level on a servitude of an elite. Some say it would be fascist, but in truth is Romanesque. And how, <clears throat> what that leaves then from the 1970, you see, you get the date and time, decimalization, the entrance of Great Britain to the United, becoming the United Kingdom, and instead giving itself over to Europe, <clears throat> fashioning iron and clay together, and for the Commonwealth to remain the colonies and the places that once upheld that Romanesque worldview to become the iron and clay of liberati, modern day society, the society we live in right now the one that just doesn't seem to be able to get along, that kind of says pull, let's pull together and become something that we're not where the Pope and a top cleric of the Islam of, of, of the Muslim community can sit down to sign an agreement that neither of them believes in to try and transcend into a super society that places Satan in the Temple of Jerusalem. What am I? Well, I'm the founder and I pray co founder of a church. A church that's still maintained in a covering of blessing of the Lord my God. Well, why found a church? Aren't there plenty to go to? Well, in the same way that I've travelled the world, but you know, barely seen a tiny part of it. I've been to many churches, but barely seen a tiny number of those. The consistent report I can share, the consistent, I believe, truth. This is not one that's biblical. There's not one that's
righteous. There's not one that's all the things that God wants them to be. Whether it's through replacement theology or prosperity gospel or just lukewarmness or plain apostasy and heresy. There's not one that I've been to that follows God's word. I've been to churches where this Holy Spirit's moving. I've been to churches where, you know, people are on fire for the Lord. I've been to churches where outwardly things are happening. And of course we're aware of the, the mega churches and the super busy churches. Super society churches. From my experience, they all seem to not be here and not be in Him. They seem to be somewhere else. That is you scratch away at the surface as you delve deeper into a fellowship a bit like I don't know the Gestapo or the Masons or the Adventist Church, you, you, you come so far, or the Jehovah's Witnesses, you, you, you pick up the outside and the message, the fruit that seems sweet. The Gestapo, <laughs> did you include those in those? Yeah, the Gestapo, they're the, the elite force in the German army, they're the, they're the intelligence and, 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 and righteousness, and they, they follow the things of goodness. But as you eat of the fruit, you find yourself torturing and murdering and killing or in the Adventist church you find that the the message that they're following and preaching and teaching is actually the one that says you must wear this and you must eat like that you must follow not this light but another and they're not the only one I mean I, I, I've used that as an example only and please I really do believe a brother of mine when he says he goes well they might be the closest biblically of all the churches that he's been to and as I've said before and I will say again and that's the founding scripture one of the reasons that, 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 that really pricked, one of the things that really pricked me, one of the things I believe the Lord's led me to, is Luke 18, 8b. <laughs> Part of a verse in the Bible. A, a brief word from the Lord of hosts and the King of kings himself. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in all the earth? And we seem to be thinking we're doing it all right, and it's obvious that we're not. There's homelessness, there's suicide, there's greed and lust and all manner of things wrong with the world. And we say, oh, yes, but I, I went to church on Sunday. I went to church on Saturday. I pay my tithes, I made my offering. I believe it's the time of the of Hadjai when it says, you know, you build your own houses, but you forget the temple. You wear the fine clothes and stand in the doorways. You don't follow the Lord of hosts. You don't follow Jesus. You don't follow God. But 
people are lovers of themselves and lovers of money. I know that the end times, the only mystery that remains, the only thing that the Lord of hosts has kept to himself is the time of his coming. The second coming. And what do I press into? What do I believe in? What do I call and walk, walk towards? And what do I pray for? As I've shared before and I'll share again. Ezekiel 47. That a, a spring may rise up from the temple, a trickle, a flow from the temple. And then a thousand cubits, it's an ankle deep. And Another thousand cubits, it's knee deep, and another thousand cubits, it's waist deep, and another thousand cubits is a, a river that no man can cross, a river that, on the banks of which the trees come down to drink, and then they bear all manner of fruit. And then where the river meets the sea, the sea is sweet. I wrote this week, uh, the notes I'll probably preach from today, you know, if God wants to bring a, thousand, a billion Muslims to the to the faith, to the truth, he'll do it. If God wants to bring... Good day to you. Let's get the open stone in shot. Mr. Organised. I didn't do that on purpose. And not a Sabbath morning. festival <clears throat> feast of dedication which for the most of the week I've mistakenly assumed or thought of it as Solomon's dedication of the temple in reality it's the uprising of the Maccabees. What you can see is the sunlight pouring through the clouds. But the light that the oil didn't run out for the menorah bottle only enough for a day's burning, a day's oil, echoing a previous miracle. Just how close the Jewish people were becoming to the second coming, just 150 years before Christ and a Harbingers and portents evident. A group of Jewish men, the Maccabees, come together and can take it no more, would rather die and see themselves dead than to see the temple desecrated. The, uh, pigs slaughtered on the sacrificed on the temple altar and the blood <coughs> poured out over the things of the temple by Greeks talk about the reading I was given 
from Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 14 onwards. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, and the work of errors in the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Gather up thy wares out of the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once, and will distress them, that they may find it so. Woe is me for my hurt, my wound is grievous, but I said, Truly, this is grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled, and all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent any more, and to set up my curtains. For the pastors have become brutish, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flock shall be scattered. I wonder if the uh, Maccabees read this, this very passage to stir them to action. Behold, the noise of the Bruit is come, and a great commotion out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah desolate, and a den of dragons. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen, that they know thee not, and upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob, and devoured him, and consumed him, and made his habitation desolate. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing to me how the Bible talks to us. How it's not like any other book. And you can almost be like looking over your shoulder thinking, is somebody watching me? And you open, that was a, you know, I've not, I've not picked today's reading that I've chosen. It's not part of some liturgy or, or some regular pattern of reading. And yet in, in each of these things, and in, in all of these things, the Bible can speak to us. And the knowledge of that was what, what, what govern people to make liturgies, to make regular patterns of reading. My experience, my witness, if it counts for anything, is that, that if we honour God, if we go with the right heart and the right mind to seek his will and his way, to seek his counsel, he meets us there. It's not a mistake. It's not a coincidence. It's why you can pick up the Bible and open it prayerfully and have it speak to me as relevant as if I'd carefully selected through page after page. If I knew it intimately, could I have picked a more apt chapter on the day of preparation, dedication? I don't know. I don't think so. It doesn't feel so. It's so relevant, that passage, to what I'm talking about, to what the day is and what it represents, that the first time I read it, I completely missed it. And again, that's just how God is. He reveals himself and he shows himself in such amazing ways. He can't help but shrink away. And, and, and say, you are Lord, you are God, I'm nothing, but dust. And yet, as one pastor put it in India, but God, 
those sentences and that was repeated since I've been in New Zealand. But God, you see it every so often in the Bible. But God. I am but dust. I am just a moat, a tiny blip, a thing. And all of this fecundity and realms of the stars and the heavens and the galaxies. Tiny. And yet, loved, but God loves me, but God yearns for me, God desires for to walk with me and talk with me. I'm an image, made an image of him. He sent his son to die for me, to be a bridge, to open a way. That even a oaf, a buffoon, Arrogant, selfish, greedy, low-born, sexually deviant, whatever you want to call it. I have a place in the universe. I have a, I have a calling, a relationship with God. The, the, the birds and the trees and the plants and the stars, their relationship is intimate given where is mine something to be received discovered opened poured out filled up well I'm going to go and discover a bit more of that push into it it's like an ocean waiting to be discovered and I pray for you a day of dedication that you can come to dedicate yourselves again to not be those people who are lost and broken and afraid but step forward in the confidence that Jesus is real, that God is real that the things of this life are temporary and will pass away and that there will be a time of permanence and, and, and beauty and splendour that we will share together with other people who are exactly like that because they look to him and not to themselves. That the greedy and the vain and the adverts for monster and venom and the best gift ever, some trinket from a store for thousands of dollars, will just be a memory. Just be something to remember to keep us like. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I love the things that you've shown me. And I pray in that dedication that you receive of him, the fullness. I don't know if you'll come back to Carpe Cruxis or a word for the world or 211 or, you know, you'll listen to preachers. Like me. That's all we want to do, and all they want to do is point to him, point to the word, point to the truth. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Saviour. He can be your Lord and Saviour too if you would just but accept him. Ask him. That's all. Oh, repent of your sins and let go of yourself. Surrender. joy and celebration, tears and anguish, an amazing grace in, in rising up, meeting him in the clouds, in joy and celebration. In Jesus' name, Amen. Nice double gin. Not good enough to be king. Read from uh, First Chronicles, I think. How Saul failed to do what God had ordained, what God had wanted. Now God repented of, of, of wanting to make him king. 
come down here. Tides into a little private beach today. Worshipped on one side of it, dedicated, and worshipped on the other, dedicated. And then I've kind of dreamed how great it would be to have another person to stand that side of this little beach and worship and dedicate it together. But between us, God may come. Christ is everything, should be enough for us, sufficient for us. And yet we yearn for fellowship, company, physical contact. God can caress us in the, the breeze, drops of rain, the lap of waves at our feet. obdurate stupid humanity you yearn for a hand to hold are we that he is mindful of us. Who can be forgiving? He, you know, it could be the, the raging, this is just a, a, an inlet beyond the spit of land over there is the open ocean. God's like that, you know, here and also out there through all the bits in between and around, above and below, in. The splendor of the king, robed in majesty, let all the world rejoice, all the world rejoice. The splendor of the king, look at those clouds. Robed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness strives to hide, and trembles at his voice. Look at the sunlight on the trees. Trembles at his voice. I'm not going to try and say Pookie to Wow. The tree with the red. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. The stones will cry out if you don't. If I don't. No, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands. There's like a natural uh, stone cut bench I'm sat on to. And honestly, yeah, comfort like you got the skull back. Let alone send waves over hundreds of years or whatever to eat it out. The time is in his head, beginning at the end, beginning at the end. The Godhead, three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, all will see how great. How great is our 
God. He's the name above all names. I think it's right over there. Worthy of all praise. My heart will sing. How great is our God. You see, all the body of water on the earth we can be considered as one thing. The water that laps at my feet is like Jesus who washed my feet with the disciples, who's real and able for us to appreciate and touch. The Holy Spirit is like the vapour in the air around us, the clouds and the stuff necessary for us to breathe. And for, I don't know things to happen, plans to happen, and the ocean, our, our, our Lord and Maker and Creator is like the vast uncharted territories beyond the mountain. Wow. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God. How great, how great is our God. If you're not joining him, join him. Ask him. If you want to know more, go on carpetcruxes.net. Look around. There's links on uh, carpetcruxes to other preachers. Other than Come down here to Auckland, New Zealand. And share in the wonder and splendor of an idiot's reprise. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. You can wash you clean. You can shape you into a comfortable seat. can erode you and dissolve you until you're nothing really at all. I know what he wants to do. So happy Hanukkah, be blessed. <coughs> be dedicated. We're the temple now. Until he's coming. It's not some physical pile of bricks in Jerusalem. It's in me, it's in you. It's in sore need of dedication. Cleaning, of resetting, of, of, of returning to the things of him and the truth of him. Not, not religion, not... set of rules, although the commandments are something we should return to and aspire to, not legally, but immediately. In Jesus' name, Amen.